Funding for election 2018 coverage is provided in part by AARP, a nonprofit, nonpartisan membership association, 88,000 strong in North Dakota, creating real possibilities right here in North Dakota, and by the members of Prairie Public. Welcome to Prairie Public and AARP North Dakota's continuing coverage of election 2018. I'm Matt O'Lean. Tonight, the debate for North Dakota Secretary of State. My guests tonight are current Secretary of State Al Jagger, running this year as an independent, Michael Coachman from Laramore, North Dakota, running as an independent, and State Representative Josh Boucher of Fargo, the Democratic nominee. The candidates drew numbers out of a hat to start off with. Josh Boucher, you will go first with a one minute opening statement. Thank you, Matt. And thank you to all the viewers out there who are tuning in online, on the radio, and in their living rooms. Uh, my name is Josh Boucher, and I'm running for Secretary of State to help modernize the office. Uh, since I got in this race, it has been clear that uh, voters and Republicans, Democrats, and independents across the state wanted Secretary of State who will modernize the office and bring it into the 21st century. As a business owner, a legislator, and a community activist, I know what it takes to get the job done. Uh, I've worked on community organizations for the last several years, uh, co connected the last several months uh, with many folks throughout the state, putting in many stops on the campaign trail, and continue to hear from business owners, nonprofit leaders, and family farmers that they'd like to see modernizing the office. Okay, Michael Coachman, one minute opening statement. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Mike Coachman. I'm running for the Office of Secretary of State. First, I want to thank uh, PBS for having this. I also want to thank the men here showing up here. Um, I think it's going to be really good. I also want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who made it possible for me to be here. Um, it gave me the strength to, to move forward. I want to thank my family and friends. Um, without them, without that support, um, I probably wouldn't be uh, as far as I am now. I also want to thank the state of North Dakota to give me an opportunity to represent them as an ambassador for uh, them. Thank you. And Al Jagger, one minute opening statement. Well, thank you, Matt, and uh, we appreciate uh, the opportunity of being here. Also tonight, I want to thank the people of North Dakota who have allowed me the privilege and honor of serving as their Secretary of State. And I'm very happy and pleased to report to you tonight that it's an exciting time in the Secretary of State's office. So many things have happened over the years. The foundations that we've laid with the legislature in terms of uh, legislation that's helped businesses and people in everyday life. Uh, from everything from our VoteND.gov website, which has been live for several years, ranked one of the top in the nation by uh, the Pew Charitable Trust and by MIT uh, to our 24-7 uh, lien filing system that the lenders use that has worked for over two and a half years going great. And now we're just finally uh, right in the testing uh, phase of our first stop system that will provide online services. Uh, to businesses yeah, and individuals need, in the entire state. Great time okay. to be in our Secretary first topic, of State's office. First topic tonight comes from our AERP North Dakota, our co-sponsor, Al Jagger. You're gonna start us off with this first topic. The question is, what will you do, all of you, Al, Al will start first, to ensure that eligible North Dakotans are able to exercise their right to vote if they do not have required identification? And what is your stance, all of you, on voter ID or not? Al Jagger, you start us off. Well, you know, actually voting in North Dakota is one of the most easiest things that you can do uh, under the current laws in terms of the identification, providing identification coming to the polls. There's nothing in regards to voter registration. You bring the identification, uh, state-issued identif identification, uh, bring it to the polls and you're allowed to vote. The main thing is that we want every qualified uh, North Dakota voter to be able to vote. And so there's some decisions that some people have to make in terms of do they want to vote in North Dakota, be North Dakota resident, or do they want to be a resident, uh, you know, vote in the states where they, they come from. And so they have decisions to make. But what we have in place is excellent, and it really is working well. The education is out there. The system is working uh, well. 
We've had some setbacks with some federal rulings that really have complicated the situation. But voting in North Dakota is easy. Uh, everybody, you know, has the identification. Uh, it's wide open in terms of uh, using state-issued uh, driver's license, non, non uh, a driver's license identification. The tribal governments, uh, they have, the, the Native Americans have two options for voting in terms of providing identification. And residents of long-term care facilities uh, also have its covered. So it's really done well. Okay, Michael Coachman, response? Um, can you ask the question again, please? It's about voter identification, uh, AARP question, what will you do if elected to ensure that uh, voters have the right to vote in the state? If they follow all the guidelines that are, are spelled out, um, that's not the, wouldn't be a problem, as long as they follow what the, the law says. Um, it's really simple. I know it's, um, like you were saying, that it's not a really complicated as far as making sure you have the proper ID. Um, so on that point, um, really voting for North Dakota, uh, making any changes as far as people who are already have those license. Now, if you're talking maybe um, illegals, maybe you're talking a little different. Um, that's a different story. Okay, Josh Boucher, response? Yeah, as a legislator, um, I oppose the voter ID laws that have been passed by the, the Republican supermajority, and mostly because they are highly restrictive. Um, voters are concerned about making sure that their voices are heard. Uh, and the current law that has been fought by Secretary Jaeger and the current Attorney General to make sure that we limit who can vote based on specific things on their ID. Um, while the Secretary of State has said that it's easy, I would encourage him to get out and visit North Dakotans throughout the state and talk about how uneasy it is to get an ID. If you go to Rolla, North Dakota, their Department of Motor Vehicle office is open three and a half hours a month. So the idea of updating my ID or the ability to get a new ID if I've misplaced my ID uh, is certainly a challenge for people in Rolla and most of rural North Dakota. Places like Fargo, Minot, Bismarck, certainly it's easy to get an updated ID because we have uh, practically uh, DMV hours that are open during general business hours and people can access it. The role of government shouldn't be to limit who can vote, but to make sure that folks who are eligible to vote are able to do that. And that might mean a little extra work on our side of government, but that's certainly our responsibility. Uh, the Secretary of State in those lawsuits has lost twice uh, because they were too restrictive of ID laws. And we need to make sure that every voter, whether it's a college student, whether it's a, a single parent uh, or a farmer who's out hauling hay and wants to stop by to vote on election day, is able to do that if they're an eligible North Dakotan. L. Jagger, do you want to respond to that? Well, yes, I do, because actually it's a very, there are no extra restrictions. If you're a U.S. citizen, 18 years of age, have lived in, this, in your voting precinct for 30 days, you're eligible to vote. There's no added restrictions. All you have to do is provide identification that matches that. And so it's very simple. Uh, we have about 97, 98 percent of the people that vote in North Dakota come to the polls using one of those pieces of identification. So it's not that difficult in terms of obtaining, and there are many different options in terms of how it can be done. Uh, the information is available on the Secretary of State's website. Uh, you know, the decisions of the court have, uh, have set us back and have been very challenging, and they are being appealed at this particular time uh, because the North Dakota law uh, the requirements are no different in, in states that have voter registration. We don't have voter straight registration. Come to the polls with your identification and you're, you can vote. Michael Coachman, do you want to weigh in again? Yes. Um, what you're saying, Josh, is probably correct, but I don't think it's a uh, voter ID or having the proper uh, improper paperwork or a proper paperwork. We stated that it, it is, that getting an ID is, is easy. I think what you're saying in roll it might be a management problem. If it's open three days a week, it should be open five days a week. That's a management problem. That's different from what the requirements are. And I understand what you're saying on that. It should be easier for somebody to vote. They need to have the hours or the time to be to get in there to be able to get those IDs or bring their paperwork in to get the, a valid ID. Okay, Josh Boucher, you get the last word on this and we'll go to the next topic. Thank you. I would, I would challenge what the Secretary has said because 
the easiness of being able to vote currently, as we voted in the primary this last June, is because the court ruled saying that the, the ID law that was passed by the legislature was too restrictive. And it was the court that expanded opportunity to make sure that, yes, I might have an ID that's outdated um, or from a tribal government or college campus, and if I bring in substantiating documentation that proves that I live there, that that can be used as part of voting. That makes sense to me. And that was the law before. Um, unfortunately, uh, Secretary Jaeger and others continue to want to make sure that the, the ID has to have specific information on it. That's not a reality for folks in a variety of different situations. And so again, I'd encourage the Secretary and anyone else who's trying to pass laws to make sure that we have a really restrictive ID. Go out and talk to North Dakotans. Talk about the reality of how do I get an ID? How do I get that updated? What does my state or government or tribal issued ID actually look like? And how can we make that work for the system we're trying to protect? All right, let's move on to an issue that has been mentioned already in an opening statement. That's modernization of the computer system in the Office of Secretary of State. And Michael, uh, um, you will start us off with this. How does this happen? How does the state modernize with uh, possible budget cuts? Uh, the 10% cuts have been, have been kind of uh, suggested by Governor Burgum for all departments to look at 10%. Uh, Michael Coachman, start us off on this, the modernization of the office. What I would probably do first is North Dakota has tons of talent, a lot of talent. What I would do is put out a um, uh, a show, or not a show, a, a opportunity for businesses, IT companies to say, look, this is what our criteria we're looking for for our computer system. Can you meet it? And have where that if they do become within a first or second place, then we can implement that system into um, the Secretary of State's office. We have a lot of talent. If we can't find it here, in other words, we say give you three months, because I, I got on a website and um, to fill up my paperwork. It wasn't the easiest thing. Matter of fact, I was calling other people to find out what do we need to do. I know there's enough technology out there that when you put your name in there, you should say, okay, this is the office I'm running for. This is all the required paperwork that you're gonna need. When you put your name in there, it should all fill all the different areas. I would try to get the talent of people who are here in North Dakota, first, come together and say, hey, look, this is what the requirements are. This is what we're looking for. Can you help us meet them? And then try to put a bid out for it. Okay, Josh Boucher, response? I would agree with Mr. Coachman the fact that we have a lot of talent in the state, both within uh, the public employee system who are working on these projects, as well as private sector. Um, and one thing that these projects have failed to do through the Secretary of State's office is actually engage the business community and people who are actually the end users. As Michael indicated, using the system is very cumbersome. Uh, it doesn't make sense and unless it's something you use every day. So again, the system is being created for those of us on the back end that use the system every day versus the end user, the public facing uh, businesses, nonprofits, and family farmers who need to use it once, twice, three times a year. And that's why what I've proposed, along with my colleague uh, Kylie Oberson, who's running for tax commissioner, the North Dakota Hub, which is essentially a one stop shop uh, for businesses, nonprofits, and again, family farmers to access what they need for government. Uh, to comply with government regulation shouldn't be burdensome. Uh, our job should be to make it easy and get out of the way. And that's what North Dakota Hub does. Okay, Al Jagger response. Well, the, the good, great thing is we already have it all done. Uh, in, in the 2015 legislative session, the legislature appropriated money for our project. Representative Boshi voted for it, so he, he's, I have to thank him for the funding that uh, has been provided for this particular project. Uh, we do quarterly reports to the Information Technology Committee. Uh, every major project like this has a steering committee. And uh, as an agency, we only have two voices on it. This project has been in de under development for four years. It's coming together great. Uh, so in terms of modernizing the office, this system is being developed by a company that has uh, already served Secretary of States in other, other states. 
Uh, it's going to be very user friendly. My staff is working overtime in terms of getting it done. And so the idea that the office needs to be modernized, we're just a matter of weeks away to having one of the finest systems in the entire country. It is a done deal, people, and it's going to be absolutely great. And I'm just, that's why I'm so excited. That's why I said in my opening comment about what's happening, what technology we already have in place, and where we're going into the future. Michael Coachman, do you want to respond or add anything? No, no, I don't. Okay. Thank you. Josh Boucher, do you want to respond? I would add again, I think the secretary is is not um, understanding the reality of business in North Dakota. Um, he continues to say that this is on track when in fact this week is when that system was supposed to unveil according to the minutes of the March uh, interim IT committee. Um, and as of today, uh, we have no, no system in front of us. Uh, the, the project and the foundation of this online system began in 2005. And I have here in front of me a cell phone from 2005 that indicates how things have changed compared to the cell phones we use in today's technology. And if we're continuing to use technology and systems that were built 13 years ago as a foundation of a system without engaging, the, again, the people who are gonna use the system every day, um, it, I'm, a, I'm concerned about how actually uh, beneficial the system's gonna be for small businesses and nonprofits in North Dakota. Okay, Al, you get the last word on this issue. Well, contrary to whatever uh, he just said, this isn't being, uh, this is a brand new system. Uh, it's new technology, it's the latest, it's the greatest, it's going to be user friendly. We fully understand what business needs and what people have been asking of us. Going back a number of years, we attempted to have the projects. The funding has always uh, been cut back. In 2015, the legislature for the first time gave us complete funding. There was a complete study done about the operations of our office. It became the basis for the RFP. So right now, uh, I'm confident. I'm confident that this is going to work great. As to the timing, I gave strict instructions earlier this year that the project will be done right. It will not be rushed for any political reasons or anything else. It is on track. It is going to be done shortly. Uh, it's going to be the best. And that's why I'm so excited in terms of what's happening. Okay, let's move to our next topic. Josh Boucher, you're gonna start off on this one. There's been talk that the state needs to replace voting machines. How does that get done? What's the message to legislatures to get them to fund that? Josh Boucher, you go first. Absolutely, our voting equipment needs to be updated. It's uh, most of the equipment's from 2004 when uh, the Help America Vote Act was passed and funds came into the state to, to help local uh, in the state uh, purchase that equipment and software. Um, and many of the auditors I visit with on the campaign trail as I've been traveling since February have talked about how they're concerned about the integrity of the machines and their ability to work. They're, fortunately, many of our, our counties have gone to vote by mail, which has allowed them to use less machines and have machines for secondary parts as things come down. Uh, in this last legislative session, I supported uh, funding for new machines. And unfortunately, they that funding wasn't able to get passed. Um, and in visiting with auditors, their concern was they weren't aware uh, that that funding request was going forward. Uh, and so they weren't able to properly engage their legislators. Uh, some legislators have anywhere from one to five auditors, depending on how big their legislative district is. Uh, and so the auditors really could be a good partner in making sure we get that passed. Um, I, I think it would be very... Um, impossible to think that this next session we won't get new voting equipment and software uh, based on the cybersecurity needs we have in the state uh, as well as the the cry we're hearing from the public to make sure that their voting equipment has the integrity it needs to support our democracy. Al Jagger responds. Well there's no doubt that we need new voting uh, new voting equipment. Uh, last session to set the stage, we went out for RFP, we got bids. We had a bid in place when we went to the legislature to secure the funding for the voting system. This is something that the counties were well aware of. This, is, this, is, uh, this was to give the legislature the proper uh, means to uh, which to make a decision. I worked on that until the very last end of the session and because of funding, it wasn't funded. The system that we have now the uh, components, Microsoft will not support those anymore in time for the next election. It's vitally important that it be replaced. Right now, 
We already have the RFP out. We already have it in place. And so our recommendation uh, to the legislature and to the governor will be to use the $3 million that we've received from the federal government through the Election Assistance Commission to apply towards the purchase of the new equipment. It's sorely needed. The county auditors have done a extraordinary job in terms of using the equipment that we have now, making it last, uh, but it is at the end of its life. Michael Coachman, response? I've talked to a lot of people about the voted machines and their votes. Um, I believe the machines are outdated, but when you get new machines, is this going to meet the requirements of the voters? I'm an individual, I like to talk with people, I like to find out what they think, what, what their solutions are to the problem. One of the problems is that when they go in and vote, as you know in the primary, sometimes we have cross voting, which becomes a problem. That means your vote is not heard anymore because it, you crossed out. To me, if you're going to get a voting machine, have one that's going to have where you can do individual party. If you're a Republican, you get a Republican ticket, you get a Democrat or a Libertarian, or if you get a Constitution, you should have different ballots for each and every one to eliminate all of that and let it track that way. That way you have a recount, you have that many ballots for that machine. We got to have the machines to meet the needs of the people, not just to say, I got an updated machine. Okay, I'm going to try to get one more issue in, about 40 second responses of what I'm looking for here. Are North Dakota standards for getting measures on the ballot too limited or too easy? Al Jagger, go first. Well, it's a long time tradition. Uh, we've uh, worked on it over the interim, a lot of, a lot of things that have come up. Uh, one of the concerns that, that really is present now is that the number of out-of-state interests that come in and fund uh, what should be a really grassroots uh, North Dakota thing. That's a, a great concern to me. I've reviewed many petitions over the years and for uh, out-of-state interests to come in with thousands and, uh, of dollars to influence uh, what we as North Dakotans uh, should think, um, that's where I have a great concern. Michael Coachman, response? I believe that the people of North Dakota should decide on that. In other words, as a Secretary of State is a bipartisan position, it's not a Republican, Democrat, or whatever. That is something that the people of North Dakota need to vote on. It says, do you want out-of-state funding? Do you want in-state? How do you want to do it? They need to decide on how to vote or to put out a measure on, not me. I am there supposed to support and enforce what is said. My opinion really doesn't matter. It's what the people of North Dakota want. Okay, Josh Boucher, last response on this. Last word. I think North Dakotans are very proud of their ability to have access to the ballot through a direct referendum or a ballot initiative. Uh, it's a way that they can have a check on the government that uh, is supposed to be working on their behalf. Um, I think the one cog in our system and, and what we're probably going to see in this next legislative session is the idea, idea that either the Secretary of State's office, Legislative Council, or the Attorney General, or a combination of them, um, works in partnership with these groups to make sure at least the language that they are putting forward is something that is, uh, first of all, enforceable, but also manageable within our state century code. Um, we've seen with Marcy's Law, uh, with medical marijuana, and some of the concerns coming out with the ballot initiatives this fall, uh, just language may not be congruent with the way things work in North Dakota. And so, to, if nothing else, provide access to a legal attorney through the state for a set period of time to make sure that the intention of the ballot initiative, the grassroots group, is being implemented when people vote on it. Okay, we need to get to one minute closing statements. It goes fast. Al Jagger, you go first. Well, I care deeply about North Dakota, and as I said at the beginning, I thank the voters of North Dakota for allowing me the opportunity to be the Secretary of State. I understand the importance of this office. Over 40 different duties. It takes a person of integrity. I have the track record, and I very would much appreciate allowing me to go ahead and serve as your Secretary of State one more time because of all the exciting things that we're going to be bringing to the people of North Dakota, and I thank you. Josh Boucher, one-minute closing statement. 
Thank you to everyone who watched tonight. Um, as a candidate, I look forward to the next 56 days uh, meeting as many of you as possible. Uh, I, as a small business owner and a legislator, feel that I am well equipped uh, to manage the Office of Secretary of State uh, and agree with, again, Republicans and Democrats, independents throughout the state who have said that it's time for someone new. Uh, 25 years is plenty of time to get things done, and when we haven't seen those things get done, it's time for someone new. And so I look forward to being that new fresh face in the Secretary of State's office, and I'd appreciate your vote. And Michael Coachman, one minute closing statement. As your, I like to be your Secretary of State because I believe that office is an ambassador for North Dakota. And as an ambassador, I want to come out and meet you. I don't want to just me come out during election cycle. I want to be each and every month throughout the state with the people in my office, meeting your needs, hearing from you what you have, the problems you're having, making sure we go to each and every county that we're all on the same page and to make it easier for you. The Office of the Secretary of State is for you, to represent you, to protect you in all things, your personal ID, everything. And as your Secretary of State, I will do that. I will talk with you, I will meet with you and serve you. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, thanks to all of you for being here tonight, Josh Boucher, Michael Coachman, Al Jagger. I would like to thank you for watching and listening out there in uh, Prairie Public Land and AARP North Dakota, our co-sponsor. Remember, Election Day is November 6th, so either get out and vote the 6th or take advantage of early voting. I'm Matt O'Lean. Thank you for watching Prairie Public and AARP North Dakota's coverage of Election 2018. So long. Funding for election 2018 coverage is provided in part by AARP, a nonprofit, nonpartisan membership association, 88,000 strong in North Dakota, creating real possibilities right here in North Dakota, and by the members of Prairie Public.